Hello and welcome back. I want to provide a little bit more context on the Librem 5 and my commentary in the previous video. First of all, thank you to all the feedback you generated and commentary going on through other channels, well, Reddit. If there are other discussions, feel free to link them in the comments. If there are any recurring themes, I may try to respond in one spot, but otherwise I plan to see how the phone develops and hopefully move this channel and my energy back to trying to be yet another photography channel on YouTube, because obviously we need more people talking about how great $7,000 Leicas are or how Micro Four Thirds isn't exactly dead yet. My commentary is based on the messaging that Purism has been providing in email and on their website and how they categorize the phone. I don't think that given what they've stated in those channels, my commentary is off base. Purism has referred to the Evergreen Batch as its production model and made assertions about what would be available when the production model was shipping. Honestly, I don't particularly care about the ship date missing. I think that's par for the course. It's my first crowdfunded Linux phone rodeo. I'm impressed that it did ship, but at the same time, I hold them to a higher degree of accountability and expectation, as they were an existing company shipping hardware. Both should have a better understanding of the business and more at stake if they fail. To summarize and reiterate from my Librem 5 impression video, I did originally order the Librem 5 in September 2018, and after it had already surpassed its funding goal. I originally requested to be in one of the prototype branches and was scheduled for Dogwood, before being bumped to Evergreen. And this was the last batch according to Purism in their Choose Your Preferred Librem 5 shipping batch email, and the one they described as being suitable for everyday use. Purism's shopping page at the time, under key facts and promised deliverables, was a mix of both hardware and software. They weren't promising just the hardware, although I appreciate them making the prototypes available as an option. Had I been in the Dogwood Batcher earlier, I wouldn't have been so harsh. My response was based on how Purism had positioned the Evergreen batch and how they continued to market the phone. The most readily available information about this phone is the product page and the marketing blog. And I worry that people who have already pre-ordered or potential customers aren't aware of what to expect. I've recently looked at the videos Purism has posted on YouTube, some of which definitely fall into the marketing vision category, others of which seem intentionally misleading. With the former, I worry about confusing people. It's the latter with which I take exception. Two in particular are where they time the boot process of the 2019 dev kit against an Android phone and where they record data sent by Android, iOS, and PureOS-based phones when not being used interactively. In the former case, they mentioned it's being run against an HTC One, but they don't indicate that they're running their 2019 dev kit against a discontinued phone from 2013. Six-year difference in technology. The data sent at rest video doesn't provide a lot of context about what's going on. It doesn't indicate what version of the software, it doesn't indicate whether they've registered for an Apple account, iCloud account, whether they've registered for a Google account, or if they skipped those steps in the installation. What was the data being exchanged? Both Apple and Android regularly check for software updates and download the software in the background, as well as provide frameworks for apps that send push messages, saving on battery life. Conflating this user with spying on the user is misleading, and not providing context doesn't give an informed impression of what's actually being measured here. And in fact, Purism indicates that the test was inspired by a test run at a university which focused entirely on Google data being sent, and not at Apple. There's a lot to be said for marketing an open source desktop in my jacket pocket device. And if that were the gist of what Purism were saying, I wouldn't object as much. Instead, they've been pushing this as the one way for your privacy and using misleading marketing. Market and sell devices on their merits and be honest with your messaging. I'm not a fan of Google's licensed Android and the underlying Android open source project appears to be a massive security holes. But AOSP in itself avoids the Google tracking issues that, that Purism raises. Apple's closed source, but has positioned itself similarly to Purism as being a proponent for user privacy and has done well in this front with significant advances in physical security that Librem 5 doesn't have. Purism marketing ignores these advancements and presents misleading information. Instead, things like Apple's advertiser ID, which is intended as a pseudonymous identifier if users decide to install third-party apps on their device, and it can be turned off with a switch. Apple continues to move towards stricter rules about privacy, and while there are real objections to who owns the device, non-removable batteries without kill switches and other issues, those are all separate issues. It doesn't help have an informed marketplace if Purism just conflates all these different issues as just generally a privacy issue or generally a security issue. In some cases, they're solving problems that exist because of the larger market. And users can avoid a lot of this either by the way they configure their device or by avoiding third-party apps installed through the App Store or by taking other mitigations. Apple's even released a document that explains how to protect your privacy and your location within their iOS environment. I'm not angry with Purism. I'm disappointed. Purism, provide accurate information to your users and potential customers. Respect that they should be able to make informed decisions and let the merits of your products stand on their own. 
I'm not expecting to post another video on this for a while. I'm hoping to move back towards talking instead of about expensive phones, talking about expensive cameras, as well as some cheaper cameras. If that interests you, please stick around. I promise I'll talk at some point about Darktable and open source workflows for photography. Otherwise, best of luck to Purism and good luck with the Librem. As I said, I'm going to hold on to my phone. Not just because of the expense in returning it, but I do want to see how it works out. Otherwise, I'd spend more time arguing with them. I am optimistic that they work these out, um, but I do think that people should be informed about what they're getting, and I don't think that Purism so far has been honest. Thank you. Have a good day. Merry Christmas. One more thing. And I can't believe that I'm back on this video. I did want to respond to one other message that I saw after I had filmed the earlier parts of this video. One of the Purism devs on Reddit commented that the phone was rebooting because the battery was flat. The phone continued to run for at least 20 minutes after I rebooted after that video without having plugged it in. So whether the kernel was confused or not, the battery itself did not go flat and had charge. So that wasn't the cause. Uh, maybe some of these things are fixed in more recent more recent patches. It's true. A lot of the videos were shot with the original release as I received it in November, in part because a lot of the videos were taken the first couple of days I had the phone, uh, right out of the package and initially playing around with it. Most of the video I shot last time, as I mentioned in the middle, had been filmed late in November. And according to commenters, a lot of the bugs are either fixed or will be fixed soon, or there are commits waiting to happen that should fix them, or Purism plans to fix them sometime in the future. At no point in the emails that Purism sent was there any indication that the software was not going according to plan, and that the promised software wasn't available. Not even a beware of tiger sign at the end of the message. And we're back. All right. Right open, default password. trying to set up email before the phone turned itself off. We're looking at Outlook.com. Oh, so you just set up a, a name. Down to email address and password. Gmail also. We'll play around with Gmail a little bit later. See if those are connecting via IMAP or something else. Or basic config. And it turned itself off again. All right, well, oh, oh, didn't turn itself off, just off the screen. Not really sure why, but we will try that again. All right, other email providers. Another look. Oh, we've got a usage display. We need our temperatures. All the internals seem to be running around at 38, 39. The battery's at 36 degrees centigrade. Let's just 
see how long it's been up. Does it look like it shut itself down? Let's just make sure. So half my keyboard's a little bit of a pain. So yeah, three minutes. 